Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here, and in this video, we're gonna paint abstract shapes of light and shadow, uh, and thus creating an interesting impression of this beautiful architectural painting. This is the Dom Church uh, Cathedral in Germany, a beautiful structure. Now, before we get started, if you enjoy my videos, consider dropping a like and sharing this video with someone you know it will help. This really helps me reach more and more people. So with that being said, let's take it to the table, get started. So funny enough, this scene is pretty much a square. It's just a bit elongated along this axis. Um, what I want to show you is the process of drawing real fast. I'm going to put down below if you want to skip to the painting stage as always. This is going to be a pretty formulaic painting in a good way. So let me show you. I'm going to first mark the spot in which I'm going to put the tippy top of this entire structure. Very beautiful. Now it's going to get to the bottom sides somewhere around here. Okay, nothing is still set in stone. But I want to show you, before I start drawing the details, which is a mistake a lot of people make, I, they, they just jump into the small details. What I want to show you is how I put in the entire silhouette or shape of the building, then we can build on, on top of that. So we have the, the biggest or main structure, if you will, uh, this middle section. Now, what's cool here is that it's really divided into thirds. Um, so it's going to be fairly easy to get that length across. So let me calculate kind of what a third is. So that's probably around here. And you know, then another third down the middle and here. So this gives us a scale that we can compare to the rest of the scene. So we have this thing here. Let me switch to a bit of a looser kind of grip, if you will. This is the main section, it goes a little down like that. We're gonna figure out the details again in a moment, but first we wanna figure out the overall proportions here, okay? We're looking at it slightly from below, so there may be a bit of tapering towards the top, but we're not gonna worry about that too much still. And then we have this, these sides here, and converge kind of to the left side here. Um, this, the, the angle doesn't matter because I'm gonna change it up in a moment, you'll see. Uh, but it is not perfect. This isn't fully, uh, I think this should go here if I want it to be truly symmetrical. But in any case, this goes here and goes down like that all the way to uh, the bottom. Okay, so what happens here doesn't matter as much. I don't really care if this line touches the edge, doesn't touch the edge, you'll see. Um, now, we're gonna put in that curve, okay, for the this part of the uh, structure. Now, what's important about curves is notice how they don't go. Let me show you. I'm just gonna grab a scrap piece of paper and a common mistake people make is they do a curve like this. And what happens is, well, I actually did it pretty decently. Uh, maybe something like this. Another decent one. What I want to show you is that the the angle should go, like you have to imagine a cylindrical shape that goes all around and then connects to the side. So this gets rounder and rounder all the way here and then you see how extreme this roundedness gets. It's not a clear break like here. It doesn't go like this and then immediately downwards. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So when you do this kind of a rounded shape, you want to almost imagine the other side of it. So that means it's gonna start at a very steep angle and slowly build towards the curve. I hope that makes sense. Just a quick tip. Now notice how this roof doesn't reach all the way to the edge really. It kind of stops, well, well, you could make an argument it reaches it on the other end. So let's leave it like that for now. Now, because this structure is all about the architectural patterns and, and all sorts of beautiful stuff like that, we don't have to get every detail in fully accurately. You'll see why in just a moment. But let's look at the other next main shape we have here. So we got this structure and it actually goes down like this. And then around here, you see we have another curve. So we want to get that in as well, okay? A bit of a, a gentler curve actually, not as, as round as here. And again, this curve just represents the overall trajectory, but within it, we have so many other shapes. So let me just put a couple of them. We have this triangle, that triangle, and they all conform to this rounded shape. So this triangle is not gonna reach all the way up to here like this one. Same goes for the other side, okay? It's gonna be able to hang a little lower. So you wanna make sure you pay attention to this. Now we have a bunch of vertical lines. So we have this main thing down the middle. Then we have 
this one to the side. Now I know this isn't really the full picture yet. Okay, we're gonna build it up slowly. Now here we have a bunch of other, see, these kinds of lines. What will happen is we'll do our best to put in the guidelines, but then we'll let them go and try and let the light and shadow guide us. Okay, so we see just a bunch of these uh, lines. Now we have uh, these go a bit outside of the curve, a bit above it. So like this, like that, like that, and then connected by other straight lines, okay? And again, the goal here, we're not gonna do a perfect recreation of this. Actually, if you wanna draw this fully accurately and in a detailed manner, it's gonna take a long time. Trust me, you'll have to spend so much time on getting the details and the curves and the windows and all of this crap that really it will take a long time. You don't wanna go that route here. Uh, so now under these triangles, we have these, you see these uh, changes in the direction of the wall. It's basically parts that are beveled outwards. Okay, so we got this one here and this one there. And then where they meet the wall itself and there's a window down the middle, you see? Now, it's gonna surprise you that I'm actually gonna stop soon because I don't need all of these uh, details, but you'll see in just a moment. So anyway, I'm adding this. You see these um, parts that are also beveled outside here around the sides. There's one here. Um, curves like that. There's another one coming out of the other side, so kind of symmetrical, going out here. And these actually have a nice little thing on top of them, like that. Now the danger with these kinds of references, which is why we're gonna stop soon, is going a little too detailed. Now, if you wanna get it, again, I'm gonna always reiterate this thing. If you wanna get it highly accurate um, and, and very close to the original, you'll have to spend a long time drawing. It's not our goal here, so I allow myself to stop soon, okay? Because I'm aiming for a looser feeling. And the danger is if I don't stop soon, I'm gonna just see all the details and don't, won't know what to focus on, what happens, what's going on there. So this is why we do it um, fairly loosely. And you know, that's, that's my focus here on this channel, in general, loose painting. If you want the more detailed one, I will probably have to search for other additional resources for that, because I don't tend to do that. Now you see how these, it's the same as these parts that go outside. We have one that sticks out here, one that sticks out there, another to the side here, another to the side there. It's kind of, a, it's a beautiful structure. I think it's it's considered a Gothic structure. Again, this one's in Germany, the uh, Dom Church, I think it's called. Um, and this is the cathedral. So you see how these, parts that go outside are kind of spilling outside. Okay, I think now we have enough information to go by. I know it looks like craziness, but that's actually what we would be preferable. Now, here's a little trick for you before we get to the painting stage. If you feel like you're gonna have a hard time painting something, I'm just adding in the windows as I speak. If you feel like you're gonna have a hard time painting something, here's a little trick for you. Just leave this sketch alone, go for a day even or two days and then come back and revisit it. What often happens and you may be able to relate is you see my sketch and you think to yourself, wow, I would really like to paint that. But when you look at your own and it's not because it's bad or anything like that, but you feel like you don't want to paint it as much. Maybe you focus too much on smaller details and you kind of lost a big picture, maybe who knows what. So just as a quick tip for you, if you feel like that's you, because I often feel it, just let it rest for a couple of days you know, always have a couple of ones ready to go and paint, but let this one rest um, and then revisit it and you'll see that you are able to approach it in a much looser manner, okay? Now, enough talking, let's get to business. So here's how we're gonna do this. What I see here is there's a very strong blue of the sky, a bit of clouds that I may ignore. And then we have the actual uh, structure itself. Now, the light generally comes from left to right. And how do I know this? Notice how all the right sides of the walls are darker. All the right sides of this part are darker. The right side of this wall is darker. The right side here is darker. You see, even in the parts that go outside, they cast a shadow to the right, okay? So you get these poles, they cast a shadow to the right. Uh, these structures cast a shadow to the right. So what we're gonna do is initial wash, blue for the sky, strong yellow for the structure, uh, except for smaller places where we'll leave white highlights that I do see here and there. Okay, so you see one here, this wall is fairly light, this wall is fairly light, this window is really light, but aside from those, we're gonna cover the whole thing up with strong blues, strong yellows, because the initial wash here is fairly strong. 
Okay, <clears throat> so we're gonna do that. About the, the, the clouds, I'm not sure. Let me, let me think about it. So let's get started here. Um, painting stage. And if you skip the drawing stage, that's perfectly fine. It's just a big mess and you can do it uh, at your own leisure. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually, I have a happy uh, blue here, a little bit of a happier phthalo-ish uh, blue. Um, the thing I'm, I think I'm gonna do is pre-wet the sky. And I know I don't often, often do that, but let's pre-wet the sky so that I can get some loose clouds going. So here we go. And for the actual structure, I'm gonna work probably wet on dry. So it doesn't matter to me this much if, if the structure is dry. Don't worry about the water touching um, the, the area where the structure is. We, we're okay with some bleeding, some blends. It, it's fine if things are get blended here. We don't really care about that. So I'm gonna start putting in the clouds. Now I have time, okay? It's very wet, the paper. So don't worry too much about, you know, uh, getting this perfectly. Take your time. Uh, don't worry about don't hurry too much. The paint is going to move a lot at this stage. So you want to account for that when you place it in. So don't start with the edges of the clouds. Start a little farther from where you want them to be. Um, and let the paint kind of spread out and do its thing and see how uh, it works. Okay. Uh, a couple of clouds here that I'm fine with leaving. There's a major cloud there. It has a bit of gray down the middle, so let's add a bit of that gray with a bit of yellow, blue, red, all of these together. Now let's see, yeah, we got a nice little gray, so that's gonna be the shadow on the cloud. Now I'm not usually a big fan of, you know, strong blue sky and, and strong, very saturated um, colors that feel a little, um, what do you call it, like a, like a children's painting in a way. Uh, but this time it will work well because there just aren't that many colors in the scene. So this is pretty much it for the sky. Now I'm gonna get to the structure. Yeah, and yeah you don't need much. I'm gonna have a, a very dominant yellow mix and I'm fine that the base has some red in it. Actually better, because sometimes when the paints aren't fully um, clean, it adds some more interest. Now I'm gonna cover the whole thing up as I mentioned, aside from a couple of selected areas for highlights. So here we go. This window is definitely in a highlight, so I'm gonna leave it pretty light. And uh, this initial wash is gonna be fairly messy, okay? So stick with me here uh, as I try and interpret the scene and understand what's where. So this window is highlighted, this wall is in the shadow, and this entire thing is in the shadow. Most of it is gonna be in the shadow, really. Um, just a few areas are gonna be white, as mentioned. So this structure is fairly light. Let's leave it white like that. There's a bit of a highlight here on this side. A lot of it is random or reflected light or things that you can't really anticipate, but for some reason, maybe it's lighter bricks even. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell exactly why a certain area is fully white, but um, it just happens sometimes, so, you know and pulling it from here. I'm fine with the, the building's yellow bleeding into the sky here as well. Uh, here we have um, this window will end somewhere around here and we can cover that section. Um, this here leaves a bit of a highlight and down the middle. These poles, I'm gonna leave a highlight to keep it interesting and then cover the whole thing up with yellow. Now you may look at this and think this is madness. This is crazy. I, I have no idea. It's hard for me to find where I am in the scene. And if you feel like that, that's perfectly normal. I'm I'm still don't not sure where everything is. So it's not like I'm fully accurate here. I'm not being fully accurate. I'm not like oh okay. So this um, this is exactly what I see there in the reference photo. This is it's it doesn't work like that. Okay, I'm at a stage where. I'm still pretty loose and fun and free with it. So don't worry about that. We'll figure our bearing, we'll get our bearings later. That's a really important thing you wanna pay attention to, okay? You will get your bearings later. For now, just try and leave a bunch of interesting white shapes. They don't have to be exactly where I left them, by the way, you can change it up. Uh, I'm spilling a bit of red uh, into the mix just to make it a little more interesting and to show my all of my uh, primary colors. It will help us later on when we add shadows too. So you'll get this nice little underpainting of, of red and then on top of it uh, a bit of 
uh, cooler colors that will enhance it. Uh, if you can put the red mostly where the points of interest are gonna be, that's a plus. So this window here, uh, even next to this window, uh, where there's gonna be some major, you know, it's just in the center. Uh, so we wanna maybe put it there. Maybe this window will get some attention as well. Let's get rid of this highlight. Uh, so you see, that's how I do it. A nice combination of um, uh, wet and wet, wet and dry, just all sorts of things. If you want to get the paint moving a bit, you can always use like a spray, water spray thing. Just go like that. I'm going to let it dry now um, and come back once it's fully dry and then we'll start establishing the shapes within it, okay? Because right now we don't yet have the shapes within it. One last touch I will do is add a bit of a stronger yellow. Remember I told you the underpainting is fairly strong here. Well, I didn't get it strong enough. So for example, here, let's make the yellow a bit stronger. And at this stage, it doesn't even matter if some parts dry, then you see you start getting these weird patterns and cauliflowers. It doesn't matter at this stage because once it's gonna dry, it's gonna be super light because I used a lot of water and it will still look beautiful, trust me, okay? Um, it's all about letting this dry and, uh, and uh, letting the shapes do what they do best, you know? Uh, create a lot of interest and and variety uh, and we'll figure out the, the rest later so to speak okay so I'm gonna let it rest and just get rid of this awkward shape uh, and come back in a few so this is fully dry now one thing I'm working on is my patience uh, and hopefully that results in better paintings but the byproduct is that this video and pretty much the next videos may end up being longer okay I hope that's a plus for you and not a negative um, but I'll do my best to keep things interesting. So right now it's all about not hurrying. Okay, don't worry about, you know, you don't have to go fast. What I want you to focus on is shapes. Let's look at this reference photo. Let's squint our eyes and figure out what shapes we see. One of the first things I would say is the rooftop. And I'm not gonna try and keep an even wash all the way through, we won't pretty much we won't need it here. I'm gonna actually show you something new, a new way I approach things uh, by focusing on the single shapes I see and making the most out of them if it means wet and wet and stuff like that, okay? So first, the roof. The roof is uh, a bit neutral, neutralized. Uh, you see it's not too blue, not too red. Uh, I'm gonna start mixing a neutral kind of value here. Uh, I will say it's a bit um, on the warm side Though I don't know if it's gonna matter as much, so let me just inject more. This is fairly light, so I need to inject a bit more paint to the mix. A bit more red, um, a bit more yellow, and this is a slow process, okay? I'm mixing, mixing, figuring out what things look like, and putting it on paper. Let's see, so it feels a little, like it should be a little cooler. Let's try this kind of a thing, and we're, we're getting there. We're pretty close. The thing is, this is way too light, so let's add a lot of everything red, blue, yellow, and slowly find the right combination. At first you can't be too stifled by the particular color because you just need to get a lot of color into the mix. So I'm getting, you see, I don't calculate. I just put in a lot of blue, put in a lot of red, a lot of yellow, and then I can start seeing uh, where I should pull this into. The more the warm, more the cool. Uh, I think this could use a bit more warmth. So I think we're good. This looks good to me. So I'm gonna get started with this very first shape I see really again, which is the uh, rooftop here. And I'm just gonna put in a mark and we'll see if it's the right value. You need to sometimes spread out the paint to really see the value clearly. This looks a little too dark, so a bit more water. And then I'm coming back to it and spreading it out because I do wanna keep some of the beautiful transparency of the watercolor, okay? Now notice I'm focusing on the shape. So here we come to a highlight, so I paint around it. And I'm going around these shapes, and I'm really just filling in the entire thing carefully around. I'm trying to see the, the shape of the dark, the what the shape of the dark roof is, okay? And stopping where it ends. So it ends somewhere around here, probably around here. And this is it, you see now I already made this structure pop a bit in a nice uh, and interesting way. I'm not uh, zooming in while filming, okay? I will zoom in maybe later on once I edit the video because I wanna keep this at a stable, uh, single stable angle. 
Uh, now on to the individual shapes we see within. Um, so next shape I want to focus on. You could get, by the way, the shadow on the rooftop. I don't want to do it because it's a sharp edge and if I put it now, it's going to blend, okay? Um, I may get this little wind thing here, so just a bit of a shadow and a bit of a cross shape there. And the rest I'm going to put in actually with white or opaque paint. Now on to the next shapes. Let's zoom in a bit on this section. I zoom in on the picture itself. Uh, you're not going to see it. And you see there's a shadow here. So I'm really observing it carefully. And you know what? Let me, I'm just going to create a black and white version of the photo for my own reference. And I'll hopefully share it on screen with you. What this does, it just allows me to see the values a little more accurately and just makes me happier that I went with a strong yellow because the, the, the lightest parts here are pretty dark still. So next shape is actually between these two poles, okay? So notice what we have here. We have a beautiful uh, set of shadows and highlights due to the architectural detail. So maybe a few lines like that, but then it breaks into strongly actually into a beautiful diagonal that kind of meets the window, okay? So something like that and a shadow on the right side of this beveled part. So we're going like this and then it goes kind of back a bit. So kind of like that. And it goes all the way down to uh, this rooftop that's actually going to be lighter than this, believe it or not. But I'm going to I'm going to connect it to the bit of a lighter color. I'm going to continue this wash all the way. You'll see in a moment why I do this. Just because it's a similar value and if I can make the connection, I will. So this goes like that. Strengthen this line. It's terrible. <laughs> and then this line as well. Go all the way down here. And again, sorry if this is going to be a slower video. I'm working on being more accurate and the result will hopefully be a better painting. Now this section, I can start injecting wet in wet into. And this is what I say when I, this is what I mean when I say make the most out of every shape you see. Okay, so I'm just mixing a neutral, uh, maybe even cooler value here. And in the shadow, I'm going to pour in, you see the shape of the window. Hopefully you can see this well. I'm going to zoom in again digitally if I have to. You see how this adds an interesting kind of depth to it? I'm not going to move to the next shape until I'm done with that. Again, making the video a little longer. My apologies, hopefully it will still be interesting. A bit stronger, thicker paint and put it right in here. And I'm actually going to bring out the shape of this roof by this kind of a negative shape around it. Okay, it actually has a dark spot here. So let's go ahead, go at it like this. And we're pretty much done with this shape in the middle. Let's move on to the next one. So here and by the way, we have some strong shadows here. Let's get those in as well. Same goes for this. Let's get these strong shadows in. But notice how the right side of this is already in the shadow. And this shadow is connected to the right section. Let me show you what I mean. The, the right side of this beveled part is already in the shadow like so, and it connects to the shadow on the right side. So let's connect them. And it stops here on the right section of this pole that also sticks out. I don't know if, I don't know if it's called a pole or a pillar rather. And notice how it stops here where this part that bevels outside is. So I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to add a line. It's not in the reference photo, but I feel like it will enhance the shape. Okay. So I added this line here and continue this shape behind this part that's beveled outside. You see, I'm going to continue it all the way to the bottom. And we got this beautiful, beautiful shape. Now onto that same thing. Let's put in some wet and wet. So this window here gets the darker treatment with all of its different uh, architect. It should be actually lower than this. So my apologies. Let's make this taller than this a little lower. It goes around like that. And also the innermost part here is a little darker as well. And then we have another strong shadow on this part of the structure and actually uh, another shadow here on it. And I'm going to leave a highlight for this triangular shape. Here you see, and this is how I'm going to go over the entire structure and slowly add 
more and more details in. That's a part of going, I guess, more accurate. Um, what else can we get here? I think we can actually merge this with the rooftop on the right. That's fairly in the shadow. Let's make it cooler, so a little more blue. Like so. And slowly and carefully work our way around this triangular shape and this um, part that connects this pillar. Okay, you really want to pay attention to the shapes. Like so. There we go. Going from around to get this accurate shape in. And I added this detail that's not really there, but I'm gonna go with it anyway, because I already added it. So something like this, connecting to uh, the rooftop. Let's make this taller. And then we have this detail in the edge that's actually probably a part of this. So let's let's leave it like that, okay? Uh, I can't rotate the paper because I want to keep the viewing experience nice. So sorry about that. I may get some lines not as accurately as I could. Now you see there's the shape under this pillar. So let's get that in. And if we can just focus on one shape at a time, you'll end up getting the full beautiful result. And this connects to this rooftop. So let's just connect them. Now, as long as you continue this way, if you have trust, and you just keep at it, it doesn't even matter if it looks that good or not, you just keep at it. Trust me, you'll end up with something nice on your hands. Okay, so um, don't worry about it being perfect. Just get the lines in, get the shapes in that you the way you see them, there's a shadow under this part. And then this parts in the shadow and it moves down all the way, uh, pretty much all the way to the bottom. And there's a cast shadow that spills on this wall, like that. And I just want to paint around this part that's beveled outside. You see, like this. Add a bit of a shadow here. Like that. We have this other part that's beveled. Let's connect it while we can, because we can. This is at the very edge of the painting. And then we get this shadow here. Now we have to figure out where this reaches. So this actually reaches all the way to another part that's beveled outside like that and it stops there. And you see we got this entire shape really nicely. This thing that sticks out, let's add that and uh, cast shadow to it like this. Let's get rid of that. And you see already it looks like something is popping out. We can add the highlight later on here. And actually there's a bit of a shadow here under this little uh, triangular thing. Okay, now the bottom section you'll be surprised is actually even simpler. Here, I want to try and lighten up on the shadows and cool them off a bit. The, the logic here is that this part is closer to the sun, so it's warmer. The lower we go, the cooler it gets. And it's going to lead to some interesting um, little effects. So I'm going to actually start here. I'm going to start with the, one of the main focal points, which is the center. Uh, this is actually more of a focal point, but I'm going to start here. And keep the contrast a little lower and the wash is a little wetter. This has a bit of a shadow underneath. There's this thing that sticks out once again and casts a drop shadow that connects to the right section. And then this entire thing is in the shadow. This wash is a little lighter again. I want the, the contrast to be a little weaker here actually. Then we have this part that's beveled out. This entire thing is in the shadow, moving the wash downwards like that, actually all the way to the bottom. Now we have to work fast. So while this is still wet, add in everything that's necessary, which means basically the wet and wet, uh, the windows, you know, all of that. Let's add a bit of burnt sienna to the mix, or is this sepia? I'm not even sure. And a bit of warmth here, and a bit of yellow actually. And start doing a bit of wet and wet. I think the main part that's darker is the the actual glasses on the window. It's funny how glasses react to light. They tend to be darker when in the shadow and lighter like this when in the light. So that, that's an interesting little effect. Uh, a bit of thicker paint here. You see, I get the top part of the window, maybe hint at some details like this rounded shape. But then we have to strengthen the glasses so they don't spread out too much. So here we go like that all the way to the bottom. And moving on, this I actually like. I'm not going to make this any darker. 
So now let's tackle the shape on the right. And this is fairly interesting because I didn't have enough room for it. So there is this thing here. It's a very tight fit and it goes around this and then it spills a cast shadow over this pole, okay? And it actually connects to the right section. So let's get that connection in a moment. I'm actually gonna use a bigger brush now because I wanna get uh, these washes fairly, um, fairly smooth. Now here we have this once again beveled part. It goes out a bit and then goes back in like that. All the way to the bottom. It goes like this. This entire thing is really in the shadow. Now here we have to think of simplicity. We have a lot of details here, so we can kind of sacrifice some of the details for simplicity and fluidity, like so. But you do want to stop every once in a while and ask yourself, uh, do I need to um, do some wet and wets? So I actually think you do. This part is darker, so here we go, really close to the pole itself. This should connect to a shadow on this part. This can be a little darker while I'm at it. A shadow that goes all the way to the left. This window here. I'm gonna try and balance these slower videos with um, a few uh, quicker ones, okay? Because I hope this isn't a nightmare really to watch. Uh, one thing I will say is that um, I'm, <laughs> I will consider making maybe a quicker uh, version of this. Let me know your thoughts of just cutting through the highlights and showing you when I mean highlights, not the highlights on the painting, but the highlights of the process and showing you maybe cutting this by half and just giving you the main interesting parts of the process. Let me know if that's something you'll be interested in. So I got this line really crooked, my bad. Let's straighten it. And this entire thing's in the shadow mostly. There's a small highlight that I'm gonna keep. But in any case, let me know if you'd like me to cut these sorts of processes into smaller, shorter videos that just focus on, not time lapse, but just focusing on the main things, okay? Now, this is fairly wet, so I'm gonna wait a few seconds for it to just dry a bit to put in the wet and wet, otherwise we're gonna get a big mess. Now, while this happens, we can just get in some shadows on the rooftops, for example, so I uh, might as well just go over this put in the shadow here. A lot of the painting process is actually doing things simultaneously when possible. So we have this shadow, then we have this small tiny dormer. Let's get that in like that. And a bit of a, you see this, let me show you. Just a bit of a um, line here. There, perfect. Um, now here we also have some darker details and if we can get those in now that's it's just a nice thing to do this is a bit darker there are quite a lot of details within this highlight let's get those in there's this beautiful rounded shape it's very common with the gothic structures hopefully i can recreate the sense of it um, and obviously we're going to have some shadows within these shadows so kind of i can dry brush them now or later on i think this is getting to be dry enough so we can put in some wet and wet so let's do that and you see it's really all about the timing. If you can get the timing right for the wet and wet, and this is something you can only learn by experience, so just practice, you know, fill in a little area, see, give it some time and see how it uh, reacts to paint. This should be a little darker yet. There is um, an architectural detail above, so somewhere around here that connects like that. You see how it gives it just a little more of a structure? And same goes for this section, but here I don't really care about what's going on as much. Uh, in the peripherals, because it's really seriously the peripherals of the painting. So just a couple of BS details like this and you're good to go. Um, what else with this section? I think this rooftop here should be a little darker, uh, like that, just to distinct it or differentiate it from the rest of the shadows here. But you see how it's slowly starting to take shape. Now let's move on to the left section. This rooftop should be a little uh, darker but still warm. So I'm gonna take this warm mix that I already have here and I'm gonna use that actually to bring out the highlights on the shape. So we go like this. I think I'm really nervous for this process because my hands are a little shaky. I will admit sometimes that happens when I'm excited for a painting process. Usually when I'm filming and when it's a small piece and you have less uh, control and also when I can't rotate the page, so it's a bit of an awkward angle, and I did, uh, my arm muscles are a little uh, 
tense because I did a serious workout. So uh, here we go. So don't, don't worry about these kinds of things. Even if your hand isn't in perfect uh, condition and you feel like you're getting crooked lines, that's fine. It can actually work. Now let's cool it off just a bit and continue pulling it all the way to the bottom because it's the same shape of, of shadow, basically. Uh, we do have this rooftop here, so let's let's connect. Let's go like this, connect it with the shadow here and connect it with the actual darker shape and go around the pillars. You see, again, around this pillar. And a lot of people wonder, you know, how <laughs> can I get this control? I have no idea. I look at my painting and I don't know where exactly I am. I don't know exactly where this shape is and, and all sorts of things like this. I will say this. This gets better with time. There isn't really a magic, um, you know, bullet to save this, to, to, to get this kind of a skill. It's just about practicing. This, by the way, there's a dark spot there that I want to keep warm. I don't know why. Let's do it warm, this area here you really, that the way to improve with, uh, you know, finding your way around your own painting is just to do it a lot. Um, sometimes you'll figure out that it doesn't matter as much if you can or cannot find your way around a painting. You'll just realize that you can kind of wing the details and they'll still look good. It doesn't have to be fully where it is in the, in the reference photo. And in fact, sometimes this, this skill to just look at something and move it to a different area, a different section and keeping it looking good uh, is actually a very valuable skill. So don't worry about, you know, getting everything in, in the perfect spot. Sometimes you can, sometimes it's beneficial to not get things in the perfect spot. Now notice I go a little warmer here. My color harmony isn't the best. I would like a more gradual transition from warm to cool, uh, but I think it will work out. Now notice the shape of this pillar it goes outwards. See, this is very common in, in, in uh, these older, I think, Gothic structures. You will get this uh, very often. It goes out and then there's a shadow underneath it. It's actually thinner than I drew it. So let's draw, let's bring it out by putting the shadow behind it. So this goes like that. And then it goes around this shape and all the way to the bottom, leaving this thin highlight, you see? And I don't care if it's not in the exact same position as it is in the reference photo. I don't care about that at all. I'm gonna add a bit of a shadow here. And then we have this part that sticks out. It's a fairly small piece too, so yes, I don't have much control over some of the elements. And then let's connect this with the edge of the paper. Now you see a nice little impression is, is gained here. Let's do some wet and wet with a bit of a cooler color here. There's a bit of a shadow within this and all the way down where the glass is, as always. Here we have a bit of a, I don't know what it is, but there's a bit of that kind of a thing going on, like that. And now we have this major part. There's this pipe or whatever that's sticking out. I don't know what these are, but they stick out and it goes like this and it connects with the right side here of this pillar that connects with the window that stops here. Okay, it's really important because we need to preserve this pillar all the way to the bottom. And actually, this cast shadow reaches all the way to this shape. So it's cast it to this pillar. So it casts it on the pillar. We have another one here that casts a shadow to the right. We have a couple of small details there. Um, and this is another shadow. Let's cool it off a bit because we're going a little more to the right. Cooled it off significantly, uh, actually. And going like that. And you just carefully follow the shapes of light and shadow. Nothing will help you improve more than just doing this on a regular basis every day. You see how the shape starts to take place? There's a bit of a shadow here. There's this shadow there. Just like in all of the other pillars, I missed the one here. This thing, we need to add some shadow to it. So let's go for that. All of the right side is in the shadow basically. So we go like this. Um, let's see, it actually connects to this that's also in the shadow, that's going to be a beautiful shape. And all the way to the bottom. And it actually connects in its entirety to this shape that's sticking out. And we get this small little roof here. Like that, there's a bit of a shadow on the window, I'm going to get that in as well. 
And there's a bit of a stronger shadow on the rooftop of this pillar. I don't know what to call these, but you know, you, hopefully you get what I'm referring to this section. There's a bit of a thing here, a bit of a detail there that I missed. And I think now we're at a stage where, okay, we got most of these details in. What I wanna do is let me show it to you up close. So here you can see everything a little up close. I think we're at a position where it's best to let it dry and then come back with a dry brush and get the rest of the details in. Maybe there's some, you know, additional windows in the shadows and all sorts of rooftop things we missed. Let's get those done kind of dry on uh, dry brush. So this is fully dry and it's time for the details. But one thing before we begin, let's not obsess too much about getting all the details in, mainly because in these small dimensions and let's see how small this painting is. So that's uh, like 18 centimeters on 15. In these small dimensions, you just won't be able to get all the details in. Uh, in fact, I kind of painted myself into a corner by going this small. So I'm gonna do my best, get in what matters. And um, I always try to treat this step as what's the biggest detail I wanna put in at the moment. And then I add on that. Now, look, I'm gonna use a lot of blue, a lot of red, a lot of yellow, and I barely pre-wet them because I want them to be brushed. Now look at how lack, <laughs> the lack of movement on my palette. That's what you want, okay? Uh, I may even let's add a bit more and then clean some of it on uh, my towel that you don't see, or you can also use the extra piece of paper just to get rid of it and see that the dry brush will work. Now, the first thing I see here is really this window that I didn't really get in and I want to get in. So I'm just gonna squeeze it in there. You see there's this major rounded shape that's really, I think, is, is beautiful. And let's get rid of some more paint and uh, we'll just read so well. So let's get that in, you see? Round and then two kind of stripes that move all the way to the bottom. Here, there isn't too much. We do have this kind of a shadow that goes around this shape. And actually this should get a little darker like that. Uh, we have a glimpse of the window, but it's pretty much blocked from our view by this part. Uh, this, these shadows are a little darker, so let's get those in. Same for this rooftop. I'm gonna strengthen the darkness here and here, and I'm gonna add these lines for the you know shingles or whatever these are, because they, they are very visible, very, very visible. This window, let's patch it up a bit. So I'm gonna add this kind of a line. I'm gonna add, uh, darken these spots just a bit. And you see, I love this brokenness. The, the fact that this line is broken. Uh, I'm gonna add a bit of water because it's really, it barely moves. Sometimes you need to add a bit water to the wet and wet, to the dry brush to get it to move a bit. You see like that. Um, here, we must have missed like something. There's a bit of a window, but we actually see it pretty well. On the other side, there's this window. That's a really major one. So we get the edges of the top part, a bit of that roundedness like that. And most importantly is the dark spots down at the bottom, like so, you see? And probably there's a darker spot to the left, to the right, sorry, of this pillar. So let's darken this up a bit. It doesn't even matter exactly what we put there. Uh, but it's more like, let's get the general shape of what's in there. Uh, this is stronger. Actually, I need this to flow a little more, dry too much. So let's add everything, more water and then more paint. Sometimes you have to first add more water to get it to move and then add, sorry, <laughs> more paint, okay? So like this, like that, a bit of everything really. Mixing is a big part of the process. Don't worry if it takes time, actually it should take time. Um, that, you know, allow it the time you need to mix. Sometimes people are in a hurry and you actually need to devote more attention to the mixing. Uh, this is a little darker, you see? This as well, there is a bit of, this detail goes a bit outside, it extends outwards. This feels a little darker, so let me go like that. Um, here, we have this that we didn't add that detail in that I said I would. I'm really just winging it. I don't know exactly what's in there, so I'm just kind of putting it rather quickly, this shadow is a little darker. This shadow under this thing is a little darker. You see how it slowly just starts to take shape and, and get 
I guess, more real and more three-dimensional. I'm gonna add, there's nothing here, but I'm gonna add this thing here, see? And a bit of a cast shadow by that detail. I forgot, but there is a cast shadow here as well, you see? And a darker there. Um, let's see what else we got here. There is a bit of a dark spot here. Um, this shadow is good, it's darker. Actually, oh yeah, we have the lines coming out of the structure. We have um, this line is at a slight angle, this line is more of an angle, this line is more of an angle, and this line, you see how that works? And they all kind of cast a shadow. This window is barely visible, so let's just get a very rough kind of detail there. And because we already did wet and wet, we managed to get some of the details in before, so we don't need to rely fully on the uh, dry brush. That's a good thing to have, a good balance to have. You don't need to just put everything in with a dry brush. You have managed to put in some more details before. Uh, this, I really want to make this darker and this darker. And now we're at a point where even if we don't add anything else, we're good. This is pretty much done. Uh, so it's just about observing it, figuring out what's missing. This, if at all. And even if we stop now, it's gonna be perfect. But this thing should be darker. These shadows should be darker. This should be darker. This, a little darker. This here, a little darker. We have the right side of this rooftop a little darker and remember what I said if it's hard for you to understand what's where that's fine you'll get better at it and when you do the drawing you're more familiar with it so if you followed my drawing to the T maybe you aren't as familiar with it but I saw that this rooftop is kind of around here a um, bit of a thing there there's a shadow up top this shape um, same for all of these things that are kind of curved outside, but let's not put too much effort into that. Um, <laughs> a bit of shadow there. And I think, believe it or not, we're done. This looks good. One thing you could do, one last thing for real is, and this, I'm gonna need a thinner brush actually. You see this sword brush, very thin, is to just add a couple of bricks where they're visible to give a bit of a brick wall texture, a stone wall, sorry, texture, not brick. And so I'm gonna need a lot of everything, a bit of blue, or a lot of blue rather, um, a lot of red, and a lot of yellow, and I'm gonna wipe some of it again, get rid of some of the paint here, because I really need this to not flow. And now I'm just looking at some areas where it's really visible. So you'll notice how it's visible here. So let's put some of it in. You see these very gentle indications of bricks. Hopefully you can see them well, just very uh, gentle. More paint, a little thicker. They don't have to be perfect actually, it's better if they're not. Same goes for this one, let's just put uh, one or two or three, something like that, maybe here. And if you really want to improve it, make them conform to the shape of the object. So one goes like this, another goes like that. One goes like this, another goes like that, with the perspective. Uh, sometimes you'll need to measure angles if you're if you're uncertain of the perspective that happens, so don't worry if you're, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard to see the perspective. So even if you've mastered the basics of it, it's still gonna challenge you. So a bit of these here, a bit of these there. Now onto the other side, just for variety's sake and for the interest, you see just a couple of bricks and conform to the shape of the pillar. So it goes like this and then like that. Same goes for this. It's It can be beneficial to do this on the lightest areas just for a stronger con uh, contrast. Here as well, um, I really love that there's this shadow here. It goes like that all the way to the bottom. Same goes for this section. And I really love the fact that we can even exploit that to show the direction of the pillar. So like this, and then at a slight angle to the right. I may have exaggerated it a bit. Um, this one, same kind of a thing. You see, just touches here and there to give it some structure and to feel like it's actually um, made of real real stone, okay? This is a great place to do this, you see? Just try to conform as much as you can to the perspective. 
Uh, and I think with that, we're gonna wrap it up. I don't wanna overdo it, maybe just a bit here. You see, I say I don't wanna overdo it and then I end up doing more and more. Uh, and you can break off some of these into, you know, uh, vertically as well, into the stone stones. Um, there's this thing here. Uh, I wonder if there are highlights that I wanna add. I think not, I think we're done. This, this point is a little wet, let's lift. Um, oh, there's this important cast shadow like that and yeah i think now we're good let's uh, wrap it up i'm gonna let it dry for a few moments sign it and we'll remove the tape together so let's now remove the tape together now if i had to give myself feedback on the painting or perhaps on how to get it to be more realistic a couple of things i would say maybe a more accurate and slow drawing process but i really didn't want to, this video to be three hours long because that's that would be the time frame that's the first thing. Uh, another thing is more natural colors. One of the things that I did here is go for very strong and saturated colors. Uh, the yellows, I wanted them to be this strong, but if you use a bit more blue and red to mute them, you'll get something that's more truer to the source. Okay, so if that's your goal, that's one thing to pay attention to. I generally like to exaggerate colors, so that's one thing you wanna watch out for in my processes. And if you want to go beyond that, then that's something you may wanna improve. I will say this, I love how there is both uh, wet on wet and wet on dry. So you get the clouds and the sky to be very fluid and fun. And then the actual um, structure is more detailed, more jagged edges, more uh, hard edges, uh, which just makes for a nice composition. And in addition to that, it makes sure that the sky don't compete with the structure. So if you need a part to be soft and smooth and not compete with the rest, consider covering it up as we did with water, doing wet and wet, and for the rest, doing it wet on dry or just do the whole thing wet, and, uh, wet on wet, I don't care, whatever works for you. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me show you uh, the thing up close. Very nice, I wouldn't say exactly a super realistic impression. Um, you know what, it, that's up for debate. I do love the way it looks though, that's for sure. So I hope you enjoyed this one, now let's wrap it up face to face. As you've seen, there's a lot to improve and I'm very aware of where my skills or where my process falls short. There's a lot of work to be done. Take your time, work more patiently. You don't have to film it like I do. And I do feel the difference when I don't film, I work a little slower, a little more patiently. This kind of a thing, if you really wanna get it to be accurate in this size, it can take about three hours, two hours. This was probably about an hour long process. So you will need generally to devote more time to the drawing, get it really accurately, really finely, more time to the mixing, mixing more natural colors, as I mentioned. Uh, but overall, the impression is here, and this is definitely true to my style, which I'm proud of. So that's that's pretty much all I can aspire to. Um, and yeah, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn how to paint like me, be sure to check out the links below. There's going to be the frustration-free watercolor course. If you want to listen to me talk about art and different subjects like this one, be sure to check out the podcast. Um, and the podcasts I have too. Um, and that's it. I really, really appreciate you watching the video, and I want to really thank you. I hope you're using this time. Maybe you're under lockdown. I don't know. Maybe you're more you spend more time at home. I hope you use this time to grow artistically. Thank you so much. I will see you again real soon.